If you've been diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy or suffer with the symptoms, then chances are you've probably tried a lot of different things to heal your nerves. You may have tried nerve support supplements, TENS units for pain, maybe physical therapy, chiropractic care, or even medications like gabapentin or Lyrica, but nothing is working and you're left wondering why and frankly, feeling rather hopeless. You might even be thinking you're just going to have to accept this horrible life sentence. Well, you don't. Today, we're gonna to uncover why so many people are struggling to recover from peripheral neuropathy, what's causing you to get stuck in this limbo hell, and what you can do to get over this hurdle, as well as heal your nerves and get your life back. Coming up. Hi gang, I'm Dr. Valerie Montero, leading expert in peripheral neuropathy and more importantly, on how to overcome it. My mission is to empower each and every peripheral neuropathy sufferer with the information you need to get you back on the road to recovery and start living again. If you're new to my channel, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so that you can get notified as soon as I publish new content. Today, I'm going to talk about why some people feel like they're stuck and just can't make any gains or improvement with their peripheral neuropathy. Now, you may have been told that your nerves are dead, and frankly, it may even feel like they are. Your legs may feel heavy, weak, and your feet might even feel like blocks of wood. You may have been told that there's no cure for your neuropathy, even though this is absolutely false. Well, let me help you understand what's going on by giving you an example. Imagine you're driving down the road and your car runs out of gas. If you don't have a gas can in your trunk, you'll have to push your car <laughs> because frankly, it's not gonna get far without gas. It doesn't matter that the car is brand new. It doesn't matter if you just had the engine rebuilt or you replaced the transmission. All that matters is that without any gas in the tank, you're not going anywhere. Well, it's a similar situation for your nerves. They need a constant source of fuel to keep working. If the cells run out of gas or their fuel supply gets cut off, it can lead to a condition called mitochondrial dysfunction. And this can prevent your peripheral nerves from healing. I understand that this may sound like a foreign concept. So let me help you understand this process. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain what a mitochondria is, why they're important to nerve function and healing, and what causes mitochondrial dysfunction. Then I'm gonna explain how to repair the damage to the mitochondria. Now, make sure you stick around until the end of this video because I'll tell you what you need to do to restore normal mitochondrial function in your nerves so that you can get back on the road to recovery. Now, let's dive in. What is a mitochondria? Mitochondria are cell organelles or mini organs within the cell. And they generate most of the chemical energy needed to power the cell's biochemical reactions. Mitochondria are referred to as the powerhouses of the cells because they're responsible for many different functions that are absolutely vital for our survival. With the exception of red blood cells, mitochondria are present in every single cell in the body. And they're responsible for processing oxygen and making over 90% of the body's energy. For instance, when the food we eat gets broken down or metabolized, the mitochondria will turn it into a usable form of energy called ATP, which is crucial for all cells, especially your nerve cells. ATP fuels your nerve cells just like gasoline fuels your car. Now, let's talk about what the role of the mitochondria is for nerve health. Your nerves are one of the main energy consumers in your body. Neurons have an extremely high energy metabolism requiring enormous amounts of cellular fuel. Because of this, they're entirely dependent on the mitochondria's ATP production to function normally. They need this energy source to perform the following functions. So here's what the cellular fuel is necessary for. It's needed to properly repair damaged sections of the nerves. It's also necessary to regenerate or regrow new healthy peripheral nerves. And huge amounts of ATP energy are imperative so that the nerves can continually transmit electrical signals 
throughout the body into the brain. Remember, all of this energy is generated by the mitochondria located in the cells of the nerves. When mitochondria get damaged and lose the ability to function, we call this mitochondrial dysfunction. This results in the nerve being starved of energy, leading to deterioration and ultimately abnormal function of the nerve. Now, depending on whether the damage has occurred in the motor, sensory, or autonomic nerves, this will determine the type of symptoms that you experience. For instance, if the mitochondria are damaged in the motor nerves, a person might experience weakness of the muscle and muscle fatigue. They may experience exercise intolerance, poor muscle tone. They may also experience muscle atrophy, also known as muscle wasting, and they could get muscle pain or cramping. On the other hand, if the mitochondria in the sensory nerves are affected, this person may experience symptoms like a loss of reflexes, inability to tolerate heat or cold, or they may experience sharp stabbing pains. Without healthy mitochondria, the peripheral nerve cell simply can't repair itself and you're stuck with these horrific symptoms of neuropathy. If you'd like to learn more about peripheral neuropathy and the types of nerve damage and their symptoms, be sure to watch our video, What is Peripheral Neuropathy? Click on the banner in the corner with the letter I on it and it'll take you to the video. When we find that patients aren't responding the way that we had anticipated to treatment, this is typically due to mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, before I tell you what we need to do to fix this, it's important for you to be aware of the things that can lead to mitochondrial damage or this dysfunction. First of all, there are many pharmaceutical drugs that can cause significant damage to the health of the mitochondria. So here's a side note, okay? I really want you guys to pay attention to this. Here's a list of prescription, prescription drugs that commonly cause mitochondrial damage. Drugs that treat high blood pressure. Statins, these are prescribed for lowering cholesterol. Also, antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs. Another drug are antibiotics, especially in the family called fluoroquinolones. Those are things like Cipro, Leviquin. And it may shock you to discover that medications for acid reflux and GERD can also lead to mitochondrial damage. Even commonly prescribed NSAIDs used to treat things like osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis can do significant damage. And this last group of medications is probably the only group that won't be a shocking surprise, and that's chemotherapy drugs. Chemotherapy does extensive damage to the mitochondria of the peripheral nerves. If you're curious to know specifically which drugs in each of these classes I'm referring to, I'll include a link in this description box below with a list so that you can take a look at it. Now, just to be fair, pharmaceutical drugs are not the only causes of mitochondrial dysfunction. There are many other environmental factors that can also result in damage to these organelles, such as vitamin, mineral, and antioxidant deficiencies. Also, smoking. This includes cigarettes, cigars, or marijuana, or vaping. Vaping was previously thought to be a much safer alternative to smoking, but now research is showing that it's far from it. Also, living in areas of high air pollution from industrial waste. I've included a link below if you want to see if you live in one of these highly polluted cities. Other things that can cause mitochondrial dysfunction are chronic alcohol consumption or alcoholism. I have a video on how much alcohol you can safely drink, so just click on that letter I in the corner, and again, it will take you to that video. Other things are chronic exposure to pesticides or insecticides, and this can be from the foods that you consume, or it could be from chemicals that you're using in or around your home. Heavy metals like mercury or arsenic can lead to this dysfunction and exposure to phthalates. These are chemicals found in plastics and you can get exposed to high amounts just by microwaving your food. The mitochondria in your nerve cells are very vulnerable to any of these chemicals. Now, the part of this video you've been waiting for, what can you take to repair mitochondrial damage and restore normal function? Well, these supplements have been proven to prevent mitochondrial dysfunction and return mitochondrial function to normal. The first one is coenzyme Q10. 
This enzyme is concentrated in the mitochondria and it's often referred to as the body spark plug because it's instrumental to the cellular energy. There are many brands on the market, but I found the best brand is found on this website, MercolaMarket.com, and it's called Ubiquinol. This is the brand that Dr. C and I take, and it's the active form of CoQ10. Now, to return your mitochondria to a healthy state, clinical studies show that you need to take between 300 to 600 milligrams of CoQ10 daily. If you're suffering with severe peripheral neuropathy, I would definitely recommend that you take 600 milligrams daily, but spread it out throughout the day. For instance, Ubiquinol, the supplement that I had referred to, comes in 100 milligram servings, 150 milligram, and 200 milligram servings. I would buy the 200 milligram and take one capsule three times a day. This will get you to a therapeutic dose. The second one that's really gonna help repair and restore that mitochondrial function are your omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, research has shown that taking high doses of omega-3s will decrease your inflammation, improve the integrity of the mitochondrial membrane, and reverse the dysfunction for any cells. Studies usually break down the amount of EPA and DHA that's present in the omega-3s, and they've shown that a person should take at least 2,000 milligrams of EPA and 1,000 milligrams of DHA daily. In order to take doses this high, it's best to take this in liquid form. And the nice part is that they're flavored, so it doesn't taste horrible. The brands that I recommend for my patients are Metagenics, Omegagenics, EPA, DHA, 2400. That's one brand, okay? So that whole thing is one brand. Um, now, I know that's a mouthful. To meet the doses used in clinical studies, we usually place our patients on two teaspoons per day. Another excellent brand is Nordic Naturals Ultimate Omega Extra, and you wanna take this in liquid form. Both of these brands can be found on Amazon. The third supplement that's important for mitochondrial health is resveratrol. This is a very powerful antioxidant that has been researched extensively for preventing cancers. Now, what the research also found is that it decreases the oxidative stress while improving the function and the growth of new healthy mitochondria. A good brand on Amazon is Purely Beneficial Resveratrol, and a therapeutic dose is two capsules daily. Now, there are still other supplements that are extremely beneficial for mitochondrial repair. And there are alpha lipoic acid, which is a potent antioxidant. It protects mitochondria from oxidative stress, especially when used in conjunction with acetyl-L-carnitine. And the dose you would need to take of this is between 300 to 600 milligrams per day. Also, benfodiamin enhances mitochondrial function by preventing oxidative stress to these organelles. Research studies suggest taking between 300 to 600 milligrams daily. Also, methylcobalamin and folate assist to repair dysfunctional mitochondria and supply the foundational tools for the mitochondria to produce the cellular fuel that's necessary. Now, you heard me mention earlier, one of the benefits of acetyl-L-carnitine when taken in conjunction with RALA, but on its own, it's still a powerful tool. It can protect the mitochondria from chemical damage, from things like elevated glucose, chemotherapy, medications, or environmental toxins like pesticides or herbicides. It has the capability to increase mitochondrial generation, meaning it helps to produce new healthy mitochondria. It might surprise you to find out that these are some of the ingredients found in our formula, Nephoria CM Gold and Blue. And to tell you the truth, that was no accident. We completely understand the role that healthy mitochondria play in the peripheral nerve's ability to undergo repair and regeneration. All of these factors were taken into consideration when we were developing our nerve support formula. Now, I've mentioned a few different brands to help steer you in the right direction, but realize the brands that I mentioned are not the only good brands that are on the market. They just happen to be the brands that I've researched extensively, and I know they're uh, good quality and they're excellent. And I've also prescribed them for my own patients for a few decades. Lastly, I do want to mention that there are several other vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that keep your mitochondria healthy. And they're things like magnesium, zinc, selenium. And by the way, you can get a necessary dosage of selenium very inexpensively simply by eating five Brazil nuts every day. Also, 
Other supplements are vitamin C, vitamin E, and K. These are all important for your powerful, you know, organelles, these powerhouses. Other findings that will improve your mitochondrial health are intermittent fasting, following a ketogenic diet, and exercise. Well, I've given you an extensive look into the health of the power plants within your nerve cells. If you've been taking a nerve support formula that you know for a fact is a good quality, however, it hasn't worked, then sick or damaged mitochondria in your nerves may be the issue. Don't get frustrated and don't give up. It's simply going to take some additional strategizing. Remember, you're not in this alone. Send us a question and we'll do our very best to help you get on the right path. Please don't forget to like us because it really helps us grow our channel. And one last thing, tell us what you want to hear about on our next video. We're here to help and want to make sure that we're covering all of the things that you want to know. I look forward to seeing you on the road to recovery. Blessings. In order to live them in the meaning, yeah? If you've been. <laughs> Try that again, wait. Okay.